Hi, I'm Megan Savers with a grain of sand, and today we're going to make a beaded tassel necklace. For today's project, we're going to need to be a little more lenient on the counts of some of our uh, supplies, and that really is because the count depends on how much fringe you need to fill your bead cap and how long you want your fringe to be. Um, and those are both matters of personal preference. So bear with me here on the actual counts. But you're going to need Fireline six pound test, scissors to cut your fire line, 10 to 14 grams of 11 seed beads. Again, that depends on how much and how long. A large bell cap, mine is a 19 by 17 millimeter vintage corrugated bead cap to give you an idea of size. You're going to need either 30 plus inches of chain and the corresponding um, findings such as this box clasp or a lobster claw clasp. Um, or you can use a finished chain. I prefer mine to be 30 inches or longer um, so that it hangs in a appropriate place. You're going to need three to four inches of 22 gauge wire to attach your tassel to your necklace, but if you have opted for a chain and clasp, then you're probably going to need a little bit more to actually attach that clasp, so keep that in mind. I've chosen as dangles on the bottom of my tassel, the six millimeter etched glass lentils, which I'm in love with, and five by 16 millimeter etched glass daggers. The counts for these were I needed 18 total fringes, so I needed only nine of the daggers, but I used 13 lentils because I also put them on top as an accent. Um, but that was a matter of personal preference. You're going to need two to three millimeter accent beads that are actually going to go in the body of the fringe and at the bottom before you add your dagger or your lentil. You're going to need two per fringe, or at least that's what I used. So I ended up using 36 because I had 18 fringes. So keep that in mind. Uh, size 12 or 11 beading needle and for later you're going to need a round nose, chain nose, and cutting plier. Using as long a piece of thread as you can stand and keeping in mind that you may have to tie in some thread later, I want you to leave about a foot of tail thread and begin working two bead ladder stitch. I want you to go an even number of beads. If you're not familiar with ladder stitch or if you need a refresher, go ahead and look at our video tutorial on ladder stitch to get that information and come back to us. But the length really depends on the side size of your cone. So my cone is, is fairly large. I am using 18 beads. I tried 20 before and 20 was just a little too big so 18 it is for me and the way that you gauge it is once you have worked a reasonable length and an even number and I highly recommend using an even number if only because we're using two different accent beads and that'll give them an even number each. I want you to take your ladder stitch and I want you to coil it into a tight little cinnamon bun. That's all you're doing. You're just making it into a tight little coil. And put it down and take your bead cap or cone and go over it and make sure that it fits. Now if it is a little big, you might want to take a couple out. If it's a little small, you might want to put a couple in, but always go in increments of two uh, to keep that ratio. 
but if it fits over it pretty well, then we should be good to go. With my working thread facing um, down, and I have it on the right, although it doesn't matter really whether you prefer to work right to left or left to right, um, as long as it's facing down, we're going to start adding our fringe. And for all of my fringe for the length, I decided that I wanted to use 40 beads as the base. And what that means is that no matter where you've decided to put your accent bead, 40 beads is going to be the total number of 11 o seed beads no matter what. So in this case I've chosen to put 20 seed beads, my accent bead, and 20 seed beads, and then my other accent bead. And that's going to be the same length and count for all of my fringes that have the dagger bead on them. Now the dagger bead requires a little bit of a saddle so that you can actually uh, fit it onto there because it's wider at the top um, than say, you know, just a little tip of a briolet or something. So I've added five seed beads, my dagger bead, and four seed beads. So that's five, one, four. And ignoring all of the other seed beads, except for the one right before my accent bead, I'm going to continue up through that bead before the accent bead and all of the other seed beads in that row. And you may have to come out a little bit and pull up and continue. Coming out of the end, careful not to get your tail and working thread twisted. And now you're coming out of the top, and I want you to go down through the CV that's directly to the left, so that you're coming out and now you're in place to add your next fringe. Now I'm going to post a photo in a second, and you're going to notice that my fringes that have the lentils at the bottom are in a slightly different configuration. I've still used the 40 total, but instead of 21, 21, I opted to go 15, one accent bead, 25, one accent bead, and then I added the same configuration of five seed beads, my lentil bead, and then four seed beads before heading back up. And you're just going to continue that for the length of your ladder stitch. Once you've finished adding all of your fringe, I want you to take a look at where your threads are. In my case, I have my working thread that has my needle attached coming up out of the last column of beads. And I have my tail thread coming down out of the same column of beads. I'm going to be working with both of these threads in the next few steps, but it's easier to move your tail thread now than to move it later. So if your tail thread is coming down, we want it to be going up. So I want you to go ahead and put a needle on your tail thread, and you don't want to go up through the column that you're coming down out of but go ahead and go up through the one right next to it. Just like that, and you've moved your tail thread. Now you can remove the needle from your tail thread so that you don't get confused as to what you're mo uh, working with, which thread you're working with, and that's what I, that's what I do. So now we have our working thread with a needle. We're coming out of the end. I've moved this again so that I'm 
coming out of the right. And you remember earlier when we rolled our original ladder stitch line into a little cinnamon roll to test the size of our cone? Well, we're kind of going to be doing that again, only slowly. And we're going to be anchoring with a ladder stitch as we go along. And I'll show you what I mean here now. So working with only the top two beads or the original ladder stitch row in this case, we are going to fold over just one, okay? Take your needle and I want you to go down through two beads on the base row and back up through the beads that you were originally coming out of. Like so. And fold a little bit more. And you'll go down through two beads and up through two beads. Now that may or may not be the beads that you just came out of. Don't worry too much about it, but you'll just fold a little. Go down through the two beads. If it'll let you. And then up through a bead that is close and corresponding. And I want you to continue folding and anchoring until you have that nice little cinnamon roll. Once you've finished making your cinnamon bun, go ahead and clip off that thread and put a needle onto your tail thread. Here's a close-up of my little cinnamon bun. Really, there is no exact rhyme or reason and way to do that particular section, so don't get bogged down into the details. Um, just, you know, kind of do it and make sure that it feels like it's secure and then it's going to stay in that shape and you'll be fine. Now we're going to add a little bucket handle to the top to hang the tassel from. So keeping an eye on where your thread is coming out of, I want you to look at the opposite side from there and add a few seed beads. In my case, I'm adding eight seed beads, and yes, I did have to try that a couple times because ultimately, when I put them on the other side, you want there to be enough of a loop that you can make a wrapped wire loop and hang this from that. So, eight was the magic number for me. Once you found your number, I want you to just catch one of the top threads opposite where you're coming out of to form that loop and then I want you to go ahead and reinforce it a couple times when you get to the other side you're going to have to catch a thread on that side before you go and reinforce I reinforce about two or three times uh, remember that your whole tassel is going to be hanging from that loop so keep that in mind and once you have reinforced, I want you to tie off and bury and clip your thread. Now it's time for the wire wrapping portion of this project. And we're going to be making a double wrapped wire loop with a little embellishment um, to attach our fringe into our cone and then to our necklace. If you're unfamiliar with 
our wrapped wire loop or double wrapped wire loop, go ahead and check out our video tutorial on earring basics or the second part of the video on attaching a clasp to a peyote stitch bracelet and that'll get you the information that you need. So we're going to start with three or four inches of 22 gauge wire, just whatever you're comfortable with to make a double wrapped wire loop. Some people like a little more and some people like a little less. And keeping in mind that this loop is going to have to fit into your uh, wrapped loop to, with a little play so that it dangles around, I want you to go down a little bit on your wire and make yourself a loop. And attach in your fringe. You see I have plenty of play there. And wrap your loop. Now keep in mind that if your cone is like mine then you're probably going to see this part of it. So you might want to try to make it as pretty as possible. Clip your end. Go up through your cone. And for embellishment, I'm adding four of the lentils to the top of my cone. And they're top drilled, so they kind of kick each other to the side, and I think it just gives it a nice texture. And kind of work them around a little bit. And they'll move a little bit once you have finished your loop, too. So now we're going to make the second loop. And before we do that, you want to decide kind of how you want this to attach. If you wish for your second loop to actually go into, uh, say, the center loop on your finished necklace or chain, then you'll want to find that center loop so that you can do that. I would like mine to be a little more free floating, so I'm going to make a kind of big loop so that I can make sure that it floats around. So make sure that your first loop is all the way at the top before you start your second one. And then go ahead and you see mine kind of snuck down there so I'm just readjusting so that I'm closer down so that I don't have to do five loops and go ahead and make your second loop and wrap it. Obviously, if you intended to add it to the center loop of your necklace, then you would have added that before you wrapped. Um, just a little common sense there, but you know, we've all we've all wrapped before we put ours in. Snip that off. Add it to your chain and finish your chain. If it's not, if you need to add um, a lobster claw to it, um, either with a double wrapped wire loop or with uh, jump rings, then go ahead and do that. And that's it, you're finished.